Hello, my name is Jimmy Benero with Notable Solutions, and in this video we will look at how we can use form scripting with auto capture to allow a user to search for email addresses by performing an LDAP search inside of our Active Directory environment. I've already created a folder for this project along with a sample configuration file in the config folder, a sample script in our code files folder, and I've also got a sample files folder which has a sample that we'll use to demonstrate how this works. So when I click on the document and I select Auto Capture, I have an option here called Send to Email. I'm going to select that, and I've got a few fields here. One is where I will place the search criteria to perform the search, and a Find button to search for any of the items that contain what's inside of the search value. Once that button is pressed, then the results will be placed into the To field, which is a list field. So for example, I'll search for any of my installers, and when I click on Find, I'm presented with an item here that says Results Count Date. So when I click on the drop down, I've got eight different results, which I could select right here and go ahead and send so it goes to that email address. I'm going to do one more search for the administrator account, which I'll go ahead and select. And if I were to leave it on here and click on Start, I'm raising an event that does validation against the form to make sure that we don't have anything in the list that says results count. So I'm going to click OK, select an actual item that should be valid, and click Start. Once I click Start, it takes that, goes through the process, and you can see I've already got the email. Now let's go ahead and go through our configuration file. Inside of AutoStore I've got the components that I need which is our auto capture component and because we're doing an LDAP search for email addresses it would be appropriate that we're sending using our send to mail recipient. Inside of auto capture I've got a form already created for our send to email. When I click edit I've got the form name already defined along with the button name and I also have the script defined, which we'll be looking at here in just a second. But first, let's look at the rest of our configuration. I've got three form fields. One is our search value, which is a string or a text field. This is where we'll be placing the information to search for. And then I've got a find button, which will actually execute with the search criteria in the search value. And then I've got a string list where all of those results will be going to. Let's go to our components tab, and when I go to send to mail recipient, in the general tab I've already defined my outgoing email server and I've already got the message defined. The most important thing for the purposes of this video is the to field which we're using our to field RRT for defining on where that email is going to go. So that's our configuration most of the work is done inside of the script. So before I go into the script, when we clicked on the Find button to make sure that it didn't say Results Count inside of the list item, we're doing a form validation, which is when the user clicks on the Start button, we want to run an event to validate the form. So we're basically validating that it doesn't contain that text. Now let's go ahead and open up the script. And here I just made a note that we don't need to do anything with run on form load because we're not doing anything inside of the form on load event. But we are with the form on validate event, so we want to make sure that that's checked. The next thing I've done is I've defined my auto capture form fields. And because we're going to be referencing the names of the fields for the purposes of keeping everything consistent and a little bit cleaner, I've defined some variables that will hold the actual name of each of the auto capture fields. So the first one is the search value, the next one is the button name, which was called find, and then finally the list field, which was called to. This constant here with the result message, meaning results count equals, we want to present to the user some type of information that we actually found something, or maybe that we didn't find anything. So I'm going to be able to use this later on in the script when I do the form validation, but I can also use this 
as I'm collecting the results and I get the count of those results, I can present those back to the user. So this variable will allow me to do that. Now let's move over to our auto capture events. And as I mentioned, we're not doing anything with form on load. So as you can see, there's nothing inside of this sub procedure. For the form on validate, I am doing something here, but I'm going to go ahead and come back to this and let's look at our button event. So for the button event, when the button is clicked, if the button name equals frm button search, which I defined up here as the find button, which normally what we would do is we would just place um, we would just place the the name of the field that the button name equals. So for example, if I said button name equals find, but if I'm referencing this button in multiple places, then I don't want to have to worry about chasing all of that down. So we're just going to leave that as the variable name. So if the button name equals the search button, which is the find button, then the first thing I'm going to do is for the form email to field, which was a list field, I'm going to run the remove all method, which basically clears out all of the items inside of that list. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to take the search value, which is the information that the user entered into the into the search value field. What we're doing here is we're simply just di dimensionalizing or variableizing the actual text that was entered into that, which is going to equal form.getFieldValue of the search field that the user is entering in the search criteria. Then the next thing we're doing is we're basically checking here if the length of the search value is greater than zero, meaning did the user actually put something in there to search against? If there's actually something to search for, then what we're going to do is we're going to run a function, which is to get the results of whatever the user entered in into the search area, and we're going to split it based on a pipe. The reason why we're going to split that onto a pipe is because a little further down below the button click uh, event, I have a helper function here, which actually obtains all of those different results. As these results are built, I'm taking each of the items and I'm using a pipe symbol here to separate each one of the records that I find. So once I've collected all of the records, what I want to do is split each one and then for each of those different results inside of the array of items that were found, then inside of the email to field, I run around the add list item method and then take the result as the label and the value of the list field. So as I loop through each one, I'm basically building up that list. Now again, if there's actually something to search for, then I'll go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I don't have any results, and the results are going to equal the result message, which, as I mentioned earlier, is right here. We're basically saying the results count, and that the results count is actually zero. And then we provide a little bit of help for the user to actually enter something in so that it could be searched for. And then we just add that item inside of the list field to present that as information that nothing was found. So looking a little closer at our function that does the um, that does the search for the items, there are a lot of different ways that you could probably get information in your environment. In this case, what this function basically will do is it's going to ultimately end up returning two parts. The first part is it's going to return that result message, which is basically, if I go back up to the top here, we reference this a lot, that results count item. So we're starting out the, the return to say, what did we actually get in terms of the count? Once we get the once we get the count, which is going to basically be the int count, which is a variable that I defined right here, which I start at zero. And as I loop through each of the records, I basically add one to int count, and that gives me the number of items I have. So this is how I'm able to return to the user how many items they have, plus the items. And STR items is built as I'm going through each of the records. But to start at the top, what we're interested in when we search for this is the email address. So the actual attribute that I'm looking for is the mail attribute inside of LDAP. So once I define that, the next thing I'm doing is I'm actually getting the domain environment that the script is in. So 
if the auto store server is joined to the Active Directory domain, we're able to uh, obtain what the default root is for that given environment. And that's basically what we're doing in these two lines here. Once I have that, I can go ahead and start creating my connection using ADODB. As I create that, then I get to my command text, which is where the actual search occurs. And here, um, I'm basically placing the domain container, which would be something like um, your company, DC equals your company, comma, DC equals local or com. Um, and once I place that in here, what I'm looking for is I'm actually looking for a user. Now some of this stuff here is standard LDAP um, syntax. Essentially what I wanted to do was I wanted to find anything that was actually a user versus a computer um, or a group. And then within that, I'm looking for where the CN, which is a LDAP attribute for the common name, basically is anything that was actually entered in for the for the text. So part of this function is I'm receiving one argument, which is what did the user enter in to search for. Inside of here, I placed an asterisk before and an asterisk after. So what this allows me to do is say if I enter in a couple of characters, it's going to look for any characters that contain or where where that you where that information is anywhere inside of the string. So it could start with, it could end with, it could be in the middle. This type of search might give you a lot of results, so it may make sense um, in your case to remove the asterisk at the very beginning where we're looking for something that starts as um, whatever the user's searching for. But in this case, we're doing something that's um, a little more open, a little more flexible. And as I go through, I basically loop through after I've established the command text, and I loop through the record set. Before I start doing that, I check to make sure um, that the record count property actually has something in it. And if it does, then go through and loop through each one. Once I get all of that, I'm building up one single string here that is pipe delimited. And I return that right in here, back up in the search uh, button or the find button, which is right here. And this is what we're splitting on. So as I split each item and I add each item to the list, I'm giving the user the ability to pick from that list on where they want that email message to go to. So coming back um, to my form on validate, again, results count is something that we're going to see at the beginning of this function return. So when we find that, we basically want to make sure that the user picked something other than leaving it on the very first item that's going to start with results count. So if in string at the very beginning of the string that the form dot get field value of the email to and then we're looking for that result message text which is right here and we're just going to do a text compare uh, versus a binary compare and if in string is greater than zero meaning if, if it actually starts with that, then what we do is we raise the form on validate, which is basically kind of like an error message. So it's not like your traditional message box that you would have if you were doing some type of Windows Forms application or you're doing uh, something within standard VB script. Uh, form on validate is only raised whenever there's a problem. And so in the case of the fact that if the email to field contains this results count thing, then, then we're raising more or less a validation error. So that's what the form underscore on validate um, function actually does. It returns a validation error. And when you find when we find that, we're saying select an item from and then the name of the field list. Okay? So let me just compile that to make sure that nothing broke. I'm going to close this out. And Probably the only thing that I'll note here is on this to field, we're making that field required. So in order for us to send an email, we need to know who it's going to go to. Otherwise, it just will fail because we won't have anywhere to go to. All right, so I'll click OK. And um, I don't need to restart because we didn't make any changes here. So we'll just run one more test. And we'll look at the form one more time. So search value, I'm searching for 
administrator so I can just type in part of that and click on find and here again we're seeing results count uh, again we want to validate that this is not the item that was picked so I'm going to click start and as you can see we're raising that validation error you need to select something from the to list so coming back here if I actually pick that then when I click on start that validation error won't occur because this doesn't contain um, the results count text and the message goes through so that's how we can do an LDAP search for um, items inside of Active Directory through LDAP uh, using auto capture and we're basically doing a few things in this video one is we're validating that the information on a form is correct um, we're also firing off a custom function that gives us a string return of different items that we would then populate into a list before we add those items in, into the list we want to remove the items first and after we remove those items we then start to loop through each one and we use the add list item uh, method to be able to add each item into the list so I hope this video has been informative and until next time thanks for watching